सो इन द लास्ट लाइक वन वी सबमिटेड द कोड लाइक दिस वॉज द रिकर्शिप थी राइट फॉर द क्लाइंबिंग स्टेज प्रॉब्लम सो द टाइम लिमिट गॉट एक्सीडेड राइट द सोल्यूशन वॉज करेक्ट वेन द टाइम लिमिट गॉट एक्सीडेड वाई इट हैपन बिकॉज इफ यू सी द रिकर्शिप ट्री ऑफ दिस राइट टू कैलकुलेट एफ ऑफ सिक्स वी एक्चुअली कैलकुलेटेड एफ ऑफ फाइव एफ ऑफ फोर टू कैलकुलेटेड एफ ऑफ फाइव वी एक्चुअली कैलकुलेटेड एफ ऑफ फोर सो इफ यू सी लाइक वी हैव ओल्ड लैप्स यू If we see it correctly, like we have one f of four, we are already calculated. But at the same time, we are again calculated f of four. We are again calculating it. F of three uh, here we already have calculated. But here we are again calculating f of three. F of two we have calculated. Yeah, we are again calculating it. Again here we are calculating f of three. So these are the overlapping problems. We can see overlap. So what what was the like to get a recursion a solution and recursion first like there should be a base condition second there should be a recurrence relation what is a recurrence relation like th this this particular relation is depending on the other two like the previous two this result is depending on the previous two. like this depends on this two this depends on this two so we we can create a recursion a uh, recurrence relation so to call it a recursive problem these are the two ways that it should happen now to call it as a dynamic programming solution you should have a overlap so if you see in this case in this two condition if you see overlaps right you see overlaps Between uh, your uh, functions, so then it can be solved by DP. How it can be solved by DP? You can just like whenever you are uh, like we have done this in the past lecture. So whenever you are calculate a function, just check it in your memory. So suppose I have a memory zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So while calculating f of six, I will see like if f of six value exists or not. If not, then I will calculate. F of five exists or not? No. Then I will calculate. F of four exists or not? And we are going like top to bottom, right? So this is actually the top to bottom approach. First, we check the top element. Now f of four we have no, so we'll go down. F of three we have no. F of two we have yeah two. So when we get the result of two, we'll store into this array. And then we'll return back. When we calculate this, f of one will store in array. Then we'll get back. F of three we have, we don't have. Now we have the answer three, so we'll store it here. F of two. Now we already have f of two into this array. So instead of going down, we'll just take the result from here. Then we'll go to f of four. F of four, you have five. We'll store it here. Similarly, when you come to here, f of three, we already have a result. So we won't go further. We'll just directly return three. F of five, we have eight, right? F of five value, we have actually uh, F of four is five, and here we have eight. Similarly, like you go down there, so you came to know like F of four. F of four is already there, so you just directly return here. So F of four, eight, and like five and four is eight plus five, that is thirty. So F of six, you are thirty. So that's how you actually. Uh, Actually, making use of memorization. So this is the top-down approach. So simply like we created a recursive program. We we first created a recurrence relation. Like this was our basic problem. So in the basic problem, we first created a recurrence relation. That the uh, solution to get it is the sum of the previous two. Then we have base condition. These are our base condition. From this two recurrence relation and base condition, we came to know this is the problem of recursion, right? So we created a program of recursion to solve this. But we actually, when we submitted this recursive program to lead code, it happens to the timeout exception uh, or the timeout. Why? Why this timeout happen? Because we have seen the overlaps. We have seen the overlaps. to solve the overlaps we actually introduce dynamic programming dynamic programming is nothing but the memorization 
we actually memorize the result we introduce a local cache we can call it a cache or array or anything uh, a local in memory uh, thing so we'll actually uh, um, while computing any function we are ch checking the cache before actually going to the computation and this is one way of doing is that is the top down approach so we'll write the to code of this one in the next lecture in the next next lecture i will tell you the bottom up approach of this so first we'll write the code of this thanks